Well, hello there, Jason D'Souza coming to you from a suburb in Nagoya, Japan. Uh, some interesting things going on here. You wouldn't know it, but there's an election happening in Japan. Uh, Prime Minister Ishiba, Prime Minister for all of eight days after taking uh, the leadership of the LDP, which has been the ruling party here for decades post-war, uh, called a snap election. And he decided to do that on the basis that the government needed a renewed mandate. The LDP government uh, had a series of scandals that plagued it to do with what they call, the English translation is undocumented funds. Um, I think we probably use the word kickbacks to ministers uh, for decisions, which is um, obviously a serious affair in any country. Uh, interestingly, the feedback has been that the money wasn't really very much at all. So many of my uh, colleagues and friends that I've been speaking to here are wondering why they bothered at all. But nonetheless, it really damages a government when you have scandals of this nature. And Prime Minister Kashida, the former Prime Minister, decided to clean house uh, before cleaning himself out of the role and uh, putting up the party for a new leader, Mr. Ishiba. What is interesting about this election is that the sort of antipathy or towards the government doesn't really seem to exist. No one seems to talk about politics here, really, or government. And there's sort of a feeling that, you know, it'll just continue on. There'll be an election and the government will continue on as normal. However, that doesn't really seem to be the case um, when you look at it in terms of polling here. So it's very hard to find any polling here. But what I have found is that actually the government is at the lowest rate it has been for a very long time, if not in history, 25%. And while that still makes it the largest party, it has some strict competition now from a center-left party called the NCP, which, you know, in traditional terms, looks at all the sorts of things that you would see in, in Western democracies. They want uh, more welfare, lower taxes on the poor, more public spending, whereas the LDP sort of takes more of a center-right position, is far more suburban-based uh, uh, rather than in the cities. You know, you can see all these sorts of thematics that we uh, hear in Western countries in Australia coming out pretty regularly. So I think it's a really fascinating period of time. I've been walking around the suburb you wouldn't see an election poster here anywhere. Um, whereas, of course, in Australia or America, you're just plastered with election paraphernalia. And uh, you only have to turn on the media uh, in Australia just to see the sort of amount of content being generated about the American election. So what do Japanese people uh, think about this? What are they concerned about? Well, unsurprisingly, like any Western country uh, that we're experiencing, it's the same sorts of issues, cost of living, it's a big issue here. Sorry, there's a truck going by here. Um, cost of living is an issue here. Japanese interest rates have been a historic uh, low uh, for forever. You know, during the whole Japanese disinflation period of time, we would have all learnt that at school at some point. However, you know, they're up, uh, you know, 10, 20, 30 basis points. And as uh, one of the big banks said to me here, you know, it may not seem like a lot uh, from your country, but here, when you've been paying. Um, a mortgage interest rates at such low levels, you've been paying mortgage payments, all of a sudden a 10, 20 basis point rise uh, has a significant impact. Um, you know, most Japanese are still worried about home ownership and housing and housing access. Um, there, is a, there is an underlying social he issue here to do with a declining birth rate and declining population that is leading to Japanese companies looking to invest overseas uh, to make sure they can generate um, income for the country and a lot of sort of thinking, I think, in many of the big corporates around, well, you know, if we've got this declining aging workforce, how do we cope with it? And I've got to say, uh, AI seems to be a big thing here. I was in a taxi yesterday um, and it was advertising a new AI assistant that can speak to you in any language, whether it be Spanish or uh, or English or, uh, or Chinese. Uh, and, uh, and in the background of this advert was a terrified uh, human Japanese assistant saying, geez, my job is about to be replaced by this AI. <laughs> Which, you know, this is the sort of thing you see in taxis in Japan, I guess, right? So overall, what, what I'm sensing here is there's a great love of Australia um, in Japan. I'm here on an Australia-Japan uh, uh, conference. Um, you know, our relationship has always really been about, re about resources, um, the, the, big, the big deals, you know, the coal, the iron ore, the, the uh, LNG, um, but really now a significant inf uh, in, uh, investment um, push on infrastructure, on real estate, 
um, because many of the Japanese companies here have spent a tremendous amount of money investing in other countries in Asia, uh, Vietnam, China, Myanmar, um, and you know, following a sort of view of the Japanese government that that is the way that Japan can exercise some soft power in the region and found that their returns have not been um, what they had hoped for. And so Australia provides a very safe, um, a very clear, uh, easy to understand um, place to invest. And that's why I think we're seeing so much um, investment interest in, in our country, which I think is wonderful. I think the Japanese are wonderful partners to work with. Um, and it's a real privilege to be here in Tokyo again. So while you are watching, uh, in Nagoya rather, <laughs> while you are watching uh, the US chaos, uh, whether we see a Trump or a Harris administration and wonder what the impact will be for the world. Think of Japan, whose election is, I think it's on the 27th. Um, you know, the government probably won't change, but I think there are some underlying issues here that um, I think are going to be really challenging for the government to deal with, um, particularly because of some of those social issues, I should say, require some really tough decisions um, to be made around social welfare, around um, around taxation, around all the sorts of things that we talk about on a regular basis in Australia. These same, uh, around housing ownership, around housing affordability. These are all issues that, you know, we cope with on a, on a regular basis in Australia. I should say also the, the just a quick thing on the Trump versus Harris um, election. Um, you know, people are focusing on the personalities and with good reason, I suppose, but a Trump presidency does bring back this whole specter of tariffs on China, tariffs on other countries in terms of US nationalism, US economic protection. Um, and that will have some impact around how all of global trade works. And we saw we saw a bit of that in, in President Trump's last term in office, you know, where we had a bit of a, the beginnings of a tariff war, um, a re reorganization of, of the NAFTA trade agreement, largely because you know, his view is that, you know, America is taken for a ride and we want more things you know, made in America. Ob obviously, we have a few policies like that in Australia with, you know, Australia first manufacturing that, and, and things like that. So I think that's that's the question that I think will be very interesting in this U.S. election. If it's a Trump presidency, what does it mean for the economy? So the Biden presidency brought us the Inflation Reduction Act. Uh, and all of this massive investment that came with it in the clean energy sector and largely sucked a lot of that capital out of other countries and into the United States to invest in clean energy. You know, whether it's worked or not, another debate perhaps for another video, but, um, but that's the reality, right? Uh, a Trump presidency will inevitably mean that this whole question of tariffs on China and trade discussion will intensify and certainly he wants a lot more manufacturing onshored into America. That's what he wants. He says, if you're going to produce stuff elsewhere, then you're going to be, you know, have a tariff on it. So this is a whole change in thinking. So I think it'll be fascinating to see. I think we're all waiting for that. Um, but I just love the contrast, I guess, just going back to the beginning and just to round this all off to a Japanese electorate that is sort of, you know, ambivalent really to an election result, but concerned about some of these bread and butter issues that we're all concerned about in our countries uh, and a organized change of government, whether it's a continuation of the current administration or, uh, or some other form, um, that probably nobody will ever notice, uh, or even notice. Whereas in the United States, total chaos. Uh, and um, yeah, it'll be fascinating to see what happens. All right, um, that's it for today. I hope you are all well. Um, thank you very much for your support of this uh, podcast. And uh, I look forward to seeing you on the next one.